What do you think Rowan can deliver? That will uh, have to be seen. I thought that what Rowan had to say was uh, measured and very good. It was a plea for church unity. It was a plea that uh, people don't pursue arguments to such an extent that they effectively unchurch their opponents. Uh, and if that's going to happen in the context of introducing women bishops, well then we need to see legislation brought in that makes genuine provision for opponents of women bishops. If that were to happen, then yes, we could all live together um, and um, bear with one another and have that three-dimensional approach that the Archbishop was talking about. And what kind of legislation would work, given that the Revision Committee was unable to come up with a solution? Well, the sort of provision that would work would be something that does give genuine alternatives to people who can't accept the Ministry of Women Bishops. It's worth remembering that the reason they can't accept is because of their convictions that the Bible says we should have different roles within the Church. Um, and therefore, um, if they're going to respect that, then we need to see uh, we need to see people being able to be accountable to bishops uh, that are genuinely alternative to the new arrangements that the church is putting in place. Everyone does seem to be genuine in their conviction that they are speaking from Bible truths and that they are right, don't they? But yet people seem to be saying completely opposite things. For example, Christina also believes that where she's coming from is justified by the Bible. Well, in that case, if we are all equally convinced that they are right, then uh, if we were to listen to what the Archbishop of Canterbury said, we would simply be making space for one another to coexist within the same church. We would be saying, OK, I won't pursue my argument to such an extent that it effectively excludes you. At the moment, the church is set on a course of action that will exclude traditionalists and conservative evangelicals. If we're going to avoid that, we need to see new legislative provisions actually put in place. And the debate tomorrow, Lorna Ashworth's debate, I mean, that's, we've got similar kind of problems with that whole issue as well. Yeah. And can that be dealt with in the same way, do you think? Well, if we adopted the three-dimensional approach that the Archbishop's talking about, where we don't just think in terms of our particular interest, but we think about what other Christians can contribute to the well-being of the whole church, well then, yes, we could find a way through in that debate. We could welcome these Christians who are taking such a brave stand in America and Canada. But at the same time, we could do it in a way that doesn't um, uh, create divisions with anybody else. Why can't, we, why can't we actually find space for all of these people? And does the covenant process offer a realistic way of doing that, do you think? I would like to think so, but I think the covenant process leaves many questions unanswered. Um, will the covenant process uh, heal these divisions in North America? Uh, well, when you consider just how many court cases are going on in North America, uh, how many people uh, are unable to get mortgages because of litigation that's been brought against them by the Episcopal Church. When you see the searing divisions that are being caused, it's a little bit difficult to see how uh, a rather abstruse covenant process is going to answer that question. Okay, thanks, Rob.